Looking for a way to spice up your videos or photo albums with a beautiful, high-quality slideshow? Now you can create a one-of-a-kind slideshow with the Photo and Video Slideshow Maker. This easy-to-use animation plugin for Final Cut Pro works with both photos and videos. Automation and randomization controls make it easy to create a unique slideshow with just a few clicks. Your photos will come alive in a memorable way. You simply drop in your photos or videos, customize the layout and style, Use the randomizer to instantly change the look, add some optional effects, and create a show-stopping slideshow like no other. Download Photo and Video Slideshow Maker for Final Cut Pro today and make an elegant photo mosaic or video scrapbook and give your family, friends, or clients the gift of memories for any special occasion. What's your story? Hello! I'm really excited today to show you how to use Photo and Video Slideshow Maker inside of Final Cut Pro. So let's get started. First thing you need to do is open up your browser. Go to your Titles and Generators browser. Go to Titles, Motion Master Templates, and then do a search for Photo and Videos. Once you have found it, you drag and drop it to your timeline. This can be put on top of a video or an image since it is a title generator. So right now we're just gonna drop it onto the timeline as is. And we can now close the browser and open up the inspector. Then we can go to the title parameters and we can start playing with our slideshow maker. So the first thing we need to do is we can turn on or off the build-in effect. So if we don't want the animation to happen, we can just turn it off. Or leave it on if you want this beautiful animation. The next thing we control is where the animation starts. So we have different options. We have from the right, so the animation will start from the right. We have left, up, down, left down. Left down means from the left down corner right down corner, left up corner, right up corner, or none at all. And we also have the drop. So if you want these photos to drop from where the camera is, you can turn this on. So what this does is, if you can see, the photos, the images, look as if they are dropping from the camera. And remember, you can use photos and videos as well. And we can combine this for one of these. So if we want to do write down and a drop, these two animations will work in conjunction with each other. We can also turn on the depth of field blur. So if we turn this up, I'll turn it up all the way. You can see that as the drop zones come in, they're blurred out. And as they settle in, they get into focus. So you can turn that up all the way, or just turn it up a little bit, whatever you choose. We can also control the speed of the animation. So if we crank it all the way up, we can see the animation happen rather quickly. If we turn down the animation speed, it will slow down. Also, we can control the grouping. So if you want all the images to come in kind of together, we can turn this all up. So it kind of groups everything together. So as you can see, all the images, all the drop zones come in pretty much all together at the same time. But if we bring this down all the way, each drop zone will come in one at a time. And you can also create this title into a compound clip and then use a freeze frame if you want to hold it there for longer. If you need, if you're working with images and you want to hold it, you can do that as well. And you can also do use the grouping halfway in the middle. So you got a little bit of, they're not all coming at the same time, but they're not all coming in individually either. Next, we can control the layout. So we have the option of using one or all the way up to seven drop zones 
on camera. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And if we want none, we can do that as well. So for whatever reason you just want to use the background, you can do that. We can also change the order which the images come in. So we can do it clockwise or counterclockwise. So it kind of changes the layout as well. We can also scale the images up if we want them to be bigger. It scales all of them up and scale them down. We can also spread the drop zones out horizontally or bring them together with the spread controls. And we can do that as well on the vertical. We can also reverse the stacking of the images. We can change the angle. So if we want to add more angle, we can, or we can bring it down to zero and have no angle at all. We can also shuffle the images around. And we can also randomize, and we can also click on this shuffle order as well. So that gives a little bit of an extra shuffle. And we can also randomize everything. So by clicking this, we'll actually randomize the whole entire layout. So by clicking on this, you can see it just changes everything. So this is a great option if you want to do many different slideshows, but you don't want to mess with the controls and adjust each time. You just click on this and you get different layouts. You keep clicking on it until you get something you like. This is one of my favorite features. And then you can still adjust it some more if you want. So let's say you got something you like and you can fine tune it using the above controls. We also have global control. So if you wanna move all the images at the same time, just kind of reposition it, you can do that as well. We can also rotate the entire group for whatever reason. You want to rotate a little bit, just give a little bit of a different angle. We can do that. We also have the border type. So if you don't want a border, you can just switch that to none, or you can leave it on rounded, which gives you a little nice rounded corner. You can also increase the width of the border, or you can reduce it down. We can also increase or decrease the shadow. So if you want no shadow, bring it down to zero. If you want some shadow, you can bring it up. We can also change the background. So we can change the background color. We can change it to whatever color we want. And we can also change the opacity. So if you have this over video, if you have this over another image or any other media, you can bring the opacity down. Or another trick you can use, if you want to have one group of images fall down and then another group on top of that, another group on top of that, you can just duplicate this slideshow maker and put it on top of each other. And when you bring the opacity down, you'll see the, the previous photos underneath. And you can also blur everything that's underneath as well. So if you want to kind of want to blur whatever's underneath, video image, whatever you have, you can bring this blur. Now, blur that background. Okay. Next thing we can do is we can add, start adding some images. So let's go here. Let's open up your, let's go to the library. Let's look for some images. And let's start adding them in. So all we need to do is click on the drop zone well, and then start choosing our images. So I'm just going to go through all of them here that I have. and add them in, and then click and apply clip once we're done. Once we have done that, we can now 
go in and adjust each image if we need to. And to do that, let's say you want to crop the images, or if you want to pan and scan to kind of move the images a little bit more, you want to center the images. What we can do is you click on this pan and scan option on the top. And then what we and turn this browser off. And then it tells you on the bottom, adjust the drop zones on the first seven frames. So what I do is I go to the first seven frames. And now I can double click on this. I can zoom out a little bit by clicking on Command minus. And I can control these handles and I can actually move and pan and scan each image. So I can do that for each one. And let's say I also want to do a portrait mode. Let's say this image that I brought in is a portrait. You can, all you need to do is click on portrait mode. Oops, this one right here. And it kind of cuts off the edges and it becomes a portrait image. And then we can do some more pan and scanning like such. And we can do that for every image. Just, you know, go use the right arrow key, and just jump to the next one, double click on the image, and then pan and scan. That's it. Once you're done, just click this off. And you have your beautiful slideshow. Also, I included, I'm just going to show you really quick. Before I go there, I want to show you that if I duplicate this by holding the option key and bringing this up and then dragging this over, let me see, I drag it on, see all the images land right about there. I can bring this here. And what I can do now is I select the top layer. I can bring this down to, let's say, two images. And now what I do is I go to background and I bring the opacity down. Let's say I'm going to bring the speed up on these so they come in quicker. Now what I can also do, just so I can see the difference, I can bring up the blur for the background. You can see those two images that I have. So let's just bring up a little bit closer. There we go. And I can just reposition this as well. So I can add as many layers as I want on top of these images. So if you want just an endless slideshow, just more images coming on top of each other, we can do that as well. Let me zoom in. So you can add as many as you want. And in addition, I also included an effects. So if I go into the effects browser here, and you do a search for photo and video slideshow, and you drag this effect onto the top image or the slideshow you have, I can actually start adding some effects to this. So I included some effects, which if you click on the video controls and then you go to the video inspector and you go to the effects section, you'll see the effects. So let's say I want to add some vignette to the, to the outside. Let's say I want to, and all these can be added in combination with the others. So all these different effects that I have here, I have bleach bypass, monochrome, if you want to, do monochrome, you can do that. You have something kind of gives that kind of like newspaper look. So you can mix them in, use as many as you want. And in addition, so there are all these are different filters that give your images a different look. And in addition, we can also add some animation control. So if you don't want the images just to kind of land and just sit there, we can actually kind of like push in. We can do some rolling, some tilting. So it kind of tilts the, like if it's a camera, the camera's tilting or swivel. And if you play back, you see that there's some motion throughout your slideshow. And that is how we use Photo and Video Slideshow Maker inside of Final Cut Pro. I also want to send a big thank you to Rachel. She was the one that recommended this template and she helped me with the testing and the beta testing. And it was her idea, and she really helped me out with this template. So if you have any recommendation or any requests, please let me know at motionmastertemplates.com. Thank you for your valuable time, and have an amazing day.